everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I have crazy hair today, hope you don't mind, all in just fun because I'm so excited for today's video. It's my first Lego jigsaw puzzle. Now this one's called Rainbow Bricks, it's a thousand pieces and I love that it's Lego bricks in a pattern of a color gradient. I just think it's going to be such a joy to build. Now, I showed this already in my last shopping haul, and I believe it was made in conjunction with Chronicle Books. So Lego either licensed their brand to them to produce the jigsaw puzzles, or they worked in combination. I always do worry a little bit when it's not a brand I'm familiar with about the quality of the pieces, but we'll give it a chance and we'll see when we get there. On the back, it does say artwork by A.J. Hansen, and then it says design by Sarah Snyder. So I don't quite know the difference between artwork and design. I'm assuming the artwork would be the actual image on the jigsaw puzzle. I don't think it's a photograph. I do believe it's been digitally produced. And I did get a piece of advice from someone online. I believe if you look at it, all the pieces, you can either read the Lego word properly or they all go in one direction. So you can kind of determine which way the pieces go based on the wording Lego on, what are they called? The little bumps on the Lego pieces, the little nubs. I'm not sure. They probably have a valid name, but I don't know what they are. So that's a little tip. I'll see if it does apply and it'll help me do the jigsaw puzzle. Now let's open the box, which I've already done on camera once before. There's a bit of glare. The box is shiny, but very nice. I like the size of the box. It's not too big for a thousand piece puzzle. I think it's just the perfect size. And it comes with a poster. Love this because that means if you're multiple people working on the jigsaw puzzle, one can use the box, one can use the poster. Very handy to have. And on the other side of the poster, it actually shows you the other jigsaw puzzles in the Lego collection. I said it before, I'll say it again. If you've done the yellow minifig head jigsaw puzzle, good on you. It just looks so tricky. But I do enjoy the rest of the jigsaw puzzles. I think they'd be a lot of fun to do. So, poster. The other thing that I really liked is that the pieces don't come in a plastic bag. They come in this bag here. It's paper. It says this bag is biodegradable and recyclable and is made from sustainable sources. So that's really nice and handy. And I'll just, let me see if I, oh yeah, it rips open nicely. Type of bag you may want to put the pieces back in. And let's just, oh, look at this. Let's just dump these pieces out. Now, just on quick observance, doesn't look like there's a speck of puzzle dust at all. The pieces, I mean, maybe they're a bit thinner than the bigger brands we know, but just, you know, looking at them right now, they don't seem too flimsy. Um, there's maybe a bit more of a shine to the finish that I would like, a bit more of a, a glossy finish. But, you know, we'll have to wait until we start working with it. That always depends on the lighting and how much reflection you get off the pieces. But it does appear to be a bit more glossy. We'll see, though. Maybe it's not too bad, but the colors look just so vibrant and nice. I'll do some close-up shots of the pieces. And just looking at it quickly, there seems to be a good variety of piece shapes, which I really appreciate. Puzzle manufacturers that do the standard, you know, two-prong pieces a lot. I don't want to use the word lazy, but I just think, you know, that little bit extra effort to put in a variety of piece shapes would be nice. And just quickly looking at these, it appears I already see, you know, three-prong pieces. I see a lot of standard pieces, but two-prong adjacent, one-prong piece. So they're standing out to me which I'm enjoying because that means hopefully there'll be a lot of different piece shapes to do. Now, for the voiceover, I have something, a little story I'm gonna share with you. Do you know the story of the Lego goat? That's all I'm gonna have to say. You'll have to watch and listen to the voiceover during the time lapse to find out more. So, without further ado and for the love of puzzles, 
let's get to building my first Lego jigsaw puzzle. And the pieces, I mean, there's a bit of glare, but I'm trying to shine it now on camera. I don't know how bad it'll be, we'll see, but plenty of variety of pieces and a good thickness, maybe not as thick as some of the other brands we know, but good enough. Okay, see, this is a border piece. So this piece, where it can either go that way, that way, I guess that doesn't really help me because I don't know which way it goes on the border yet. But the colors are vibrant, so beautiful. I hope this is coming across on camera. So lovely, the blues, I can't wait. I'm going to sort them into color gradient piles. I just love doing that. It's just so fun. Even the greens, every color, yellows, oranges, so nice, so lovely. And look at that. I've just picked pieces out at random here and put them out and I've managed to only grab two standard prong pieces, which is really nice. It just means there should be a good variety of pieces in this box. Um, some people don't like these types of backing. It, I don't know really what to call it. It's just a flat, smooth cardboard backing. I don't mind it. Remember, my big pet peeve are when pieces stick together and you can't easily take them apart and the whole puzzle comes up with you. That's my big annoyance. And the second would probably be lots of false fits. But yeah, let's just, oh, I just, I just love this. It's so colorful. So let's just get to sorting by color and enjoying this lovely Lego puzzle. GOAT, G-O-A-T, is an abbreviation for greatest of all time. And some say that the Lego GOAT minifig is the actual GOAT, the greatest of all time. The GOAT minifig was first introduced in 2011 in the Mill Village Raid set number 7189. The original Lego goat is one of the most sought after Lego animals in the Lego world, as they were only released in that one set and so far to date have never been re-released. Fans wanted the Lego goat to return and they felt its presence in the medieval blacksmith set number 21325 would have been perfect. That set was released in 2021, but alas, the goat did not make an appearance in it. Why, you ask? Well, during a roundtable interview with select LEGO fan media, including Brick Fanatics, now Brick Fanatics is the website from which I took a lot of this information, designers Wes Tabot and Austin Carlson spoke about the challenges the company faced in bringing back the GOAT into the fold so many years after its first and only appearance. This is what Austin said. We all know the goat is coveted because of how quick it ran and how limited it was. The problem was that with all the molds that we have in the company, some of them have to be given up so we can make way for the new molds. And we had such a big drought of not having any place to use a goat, so we lost the mold for that. Now from reading this, it sounds as if they purposely destroyed the mold to make room for other molds. My first question is, can't they just remake the mold? I'm assuming that they would have digital files for its design. My second question is, are they purposely limiting its existence so to create like hype and excitement? Now looking online, you can find a very limited number of goats or even of the Mill Village Raid set for sale, like on secondhand sites, auction websites, but they're very expensive. The cheapest I could find the small minifig goat started at 100 US dollars. I even read somewhere that some people believe that Lego will become a form of international currency and that the goat would be the ultimate top value with everything rated on a like goat standard scale. Kind of like, oh, you want to buy a new electric vehicle? That'll be 250 goats, please. And you could pay with it in equivalent with other Lego bricks. So 250 goats, well, that's 10,000 blue, you know, six stud pieces and 5,000 red four stud pieces and so forth. <laughs> now, in the latest Brickmas episodes of Lego Masters Australia, they talked about this rare Le Lego goat and the host Hamish, he was absolutely shocked to learn that they had none in their brick pit, which is a collection of over 
8 million bricks in over 60 different colors, but not a single goat. So he actually went online and bought one secondhand for the contestants to use. They actually wanted two for their farm, but he could only get his hands on one. The show ended up having a competition in which a member of the public won the rare Lego goat. Now, I'm sure after those recent episodes aired, the price of the rare Lego goat probably doubled, tripled, skyrocketed. And if you have a chance to watch Lego Masters Australia, you won't be disappointed. I absolutely love Hamish and Brickman. This was such a fun, enjoyable jigsaw puzzle to do. It made me so happy. I loved everything about it. Now, some things to note. I was worried about the glare. It really wasn't bad at all. Maybe slightly noticeable on the lighter bricks, the lighter colors like the whitish, the light, light blues, greens, and yellows. But apart from that, it didn't bother my eyes. It's not super glossy, so not an issue. The second thing is, remember I talked about the hint I learned about the wording of the Lego on the studs? I now know they're called studs. You don't even have to worry about the wording because the studs cast a shadow and all the shadows all go in the same direction. So after a while, when you start working on the jigsaw puzzle, you quickly realize that every piece has one specific direction and that's the way it goes based on the shadow on the pieces. So that being said, this is actually quite an easy jigsaw puzzle. And if you were worried about doing a color gradient puzzle, this would be a great introduction. Because it's not a blended color gradient, it's very much blocked. And because the shadow helps you determine the orientation of the piece, as well, there is plenty of variety in piece shape. In fact, they have some wonky donkey cut pieces that I just loved. So this puzzle, honestly, I think anyone who did it would absolutely enjoy it. It made me so happy. It was an easy puzzle to do. So if you want to branch out into color gradient puzzles, I would highly recommend this one. So we've seen how a jigsaw puzzle can be made out of Lego. But I have a question for you. Can Lego be a jigsaw puzzle? Yes, this is the small little project I've been hinting at in the last few videos. I put a poll up on my community tab asking you all if you would enjoy seeing me build this on the channel. Now I promise that I would never stray too far from jigsaw puzzles. That's my true love and the purpose of this channel. But I feel this is jigsaw puzzle adjacent enough that we would all enjoy. And in fact, in the poll, 92%, I believe, of you all said that you would love seeing me build it. So this is the next little project I have coming our way. It's the Lego World Map. I don't know too much about it. I just took the lid off the box because it's quite heavy. We'll do an unboxing. And then I have a feeling I'm going to build the map, the ground parts, the earth parts first, and I think I'm going to customize the water areas. So I'm going to need lots of help, lots of input, lots of thought as to what exactly we should do with this when it comes to the customization. But I hope you're excited. Thank you so much for voting in the poll. I really appreciate it because your input helps drive what I put as content on this channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!